Hey guys, my name is Moon and welcome back for more Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 4 Himatsubushi. So, last episode we had a night out with Oishi and his buddies, right? And then we saw the master of Majo, Asakasa. He was he was really cool, he was really good, and we also had very very nice uh CGs this time as well, right? So, let us continue. So, where are we? We're gonna talk with the informant today, right? The informant named Sato-san had me get into his car before he set off. He favored narrow roads and made numerous short left turns. I mean, he is an informant though, yeah. He needs to be very cautious. Checking to see if we were being tailed by making left turns was a rather classic technique. If it was just a single pursuer, you could confirm it that way. But if you're being tailed as a team, this archaic method wouldn't let you shake them. Of course, doing it anyway was better than not. I smiled, or I smiled, really. Riley. Looking back now, I had to be a little grateful for being made to play Mahjong. Thanks to that, I was able to relieve some tension. Eventually, Sato-san, confirming that there were no cars following us, slipped outside the city. We were on a pitch black country road, unable to see anything besides the lights outside. The only thing I was able to hear were the hum of the car's air conditioning and the chirping of the insects and frogs. <laughs> ご参加 Sato-san checked the rearview mirror one more time to confirm there wasn't anybody behind us before speaking. Hey, no one is gonna hear you. You're inside a car. A family council held by the Sonozaki main house. That would be a meaning between those who truly control Hinamizawa village. They wouldn't be talking about private family matters, it would be about the village as a whole. About organizing activities against a dam project. Among other things, everything would be decided there, in reality they were deciding the fate of the village. At the head of the meeting was Oreo Sonozaki. More or less Empress Sonozaki. Empress. As the ultimate decision maker of the clan, she was feared and respected. Infirm with old age, she was often unable to stand on her own, but her words carried enough weight to sway the fate of the village. It seemed that lately she had grown weak and on days where she wasn't feeling well, remained bedridden. Family councils that occurred while she wasn't feeling well took place with her on the floor. In the middle of a dignified Japanese style room, still in a futon, only the upper half of her body sitting upright, a stern look on her face, that was Oryo Sonozaki. Sitting next to her was her heir, Mion Sonozaki. 
She was still young. No, young wasn't quite the word. She was a girl who remained childish. Her role was to merely sit beside Oreo Sonozaki, sometimes responding to her request, however. She was the only one deemed worthy to succeed Oreo. She had the same hawkish eyes, enough to give pause to anybody so much as look at them. Much was expected of her in the future, this granddaughter of the Sonozaki's leader. And also on either side of her sat several important members of the remaining three families, the Kimiyoshi family and the Furude family. First on the list for the Kimiyoshi family was of course the mayor of Hinamizawa, Kichiro Kimiyoshi. And lined up beside him were several of it, more of his direct relatives. Opposite to them sat the other of the three families, the Furude family. The family was only comprised of the family of the Shinto priest, so the only ones sitting there were said priest, his wife, and their daughter Rika. Rika was doted on by many of the older folks in the village, and it seemed that Oryo was no exception. While the stress from just attending a family council was said to be enough to shorten your lifespan by three days, why well, super intense, it seemed like Rika was the only one exempt from that. No matter how charged the atmosphere was around her, she paid it no mind instead humming along as she doodled in a sketchbook. In fact, the night before, lying on her stomach while humming and doodling, she nonchalantly tucked her legs into Oreo's futon like it was a kotatsu. All this was the three families, and all around the room lined row upon row were relatives of the Sonozaki family. The only ones who were afforded cushions or cushions or cushions to sit on were direct relatives. The others were left to sit in the Seiza position directly under the tame mats. With Empress Sonozaki enshrined at their center, they were almost like a giant snake coiled around the room. It was decided that everybody would sit in order of their rank. The number of people from the Sonozaki family was overwhelming. The fact that the Sonozaki family held so many seats at a meeting where everything pertaining to the village was decided made determining where the balance of power was held in the three families as clear as day. The number of members in attendance from each of the families directly reflected how much influence they had in ruling Hinamizawa. Sato-san, after remaining silent for a while, quietly began to speak. Breaking the long moment of silence was the head of the Kimiyoshi family, Kiichiro Kimiyoshi. The Onigafuchi Guardians was in the business. They were nothing more than a private organization pushing for the cancellation of the Hinamizawa Dam project with no reliable source of income. Fundraising had always been a problem. When they first started operating, they had managed to collect a sizable amount of funds through donations, but as the conflict dragged on, that amount was steadily declining. <laughs> The expressions of the people related to the Sonozaki family were sullen, as the one who suggested that they should borrow that power was the family head, Oreo Sonozaki. The battle wasn't just about force of arms. In the civilized age, there were civilized methods of fighting. Oreo suggested that creating a strategy, incorporating the mass media, Oreo's foresight was spot on and the effects of the plan, while at first unclear, slowly began to manifest. If the physical confrontation at the construction site was meant to delay progress on the dam by even one day, then the propaganda war using the media was aimed at attacking the dam project itself. At first, there were those who had doubts about that strategy, but there was nobody now who called those results into question. But in order to maintain those media ties, a colossal amount of money was required. As long as the amount of funds they had was abundant, things would turn out fine. It couldn't be argued that it was a massive expense, but the results spoke for themselves. 
But with the conflict continuing to drag on, the circumstances had changed. The head of the Sonozaki family, no, the one who sat at the pinnacle of the Hinamizawa tree families, Oreo, had suggested the idea herself so it was already untouchable and continued to be allowed to drain from the budget. Nobody acknowledged that it should be so allowed but nobody could say anything. That was the price of dealing with the mass media. The only person who could object to the plan proposed by the head of the Sonozaki household herself was the mayor, Kimiyoshi san. Oreo with a hard to define expression on her face as if she had severed herself from the fetters of mortal emotion simply listened quietly to Kumiyoshi's words. But really it was hard to tell if she was quietly listening or didn't even have the intention of listening at all. The mayor looked to the priest and his wife from the Furuta family for affirmation. The priest gave a vague expression avoiding a prompt response. But his wife gave her answer without a second thought. The bulletin was as its name implied a bulletin published by the Onigafuchi Guardians. It, it outlined the alliance activities, ideals, and results, but you couldn't deny the contents were rather piecemeal. The bulletin's main goal wasn't to inform people, but rather was something to sell business. And people. Sorry, sorry. Living in the village or connected to it and using those sales to collect funds. In other words, it had become something of a tax. Of course, it didn't have to be said that this one was the main sources of income for the Onigafuchi Guardians. Originally, purchase was supposed to be voluntary, but in Hinamizawa, it had silently become the opposite. In the neighboring towns as well, it seemed that many businesses were buying copies just to avoid butting heads with the alliance. The priest whispered to his wife to not say anything unnecessary but was struck down decidedly with a cold glare. Cowering from that glare, the priest shut his mouth. The priest's wife always held the power in their relationship. That was because she was the one who carried the fruit of the bloodline. Mm, okay. It's always the ladies, right? Shonozaki family, yeah, from the from the lady side, Oreo, I suppose, and then Furude from the lady side again. The priest merely married into the family. He was nothing more than somebody who adopted the name just to join the three families. He should have been able to find a spot fairly high up in the hierarchy of things, but lack the authority in his voice meant that he had still not gained any favor. Casting a backwards glance at her rather desperate parents, Rika continued to doodle whimsically without paying them any mind. Signaled by a look from Oreo, Mion brought her ear closer to her grandma. There, something there, something was said to her in a quiet voice. After responding with a couple questions with a nod from Oreo, Mion looked around the room and conveyed her grandma's words. <laughs> Kimiyoshi made a face like he had just bit into something unpleasant, but that expression quickly disappeared like it never happened at all. Being cross-examined by a girl who still had fragments of childishness remaining within her, the word stuck in Kimiyoshi's throat as he sunk into silence. He couldn't say anything. 
The Sonozaki family are just way too powerful. Mion repeated her question once more, looking around the crowded room. Everybody refrained, making eye contact to avoid being pierced by her gaze. The words she had spoken were unarguably said in proxy for Oreo. That's why when Mion spoke them, they carried the same weight. But the look in her eyes was different. Like Oreos, they had a hawkish gaze, strong enough that anybody looking upon them would freeze in their tracks and yield. But that gaze was without a question one that belonged to Mion herself. As Mion would eventually inherit everything from Oreo, the day when she would stand up as a young and capable leader in her own right would come. Nobody wanted to believe otherwise for even a minute. That's why nobody even thought of Mion as just some sort of little kid. <laughs> Kimiyoshi's grumbling while grumbling a little bit made a gesture as if to say he had no objection. Mion had rendered her judgment. Everybody bowed their heads silently, listening to her words. The formal decree was read aloud, indicating her judgment. There would be no retrial, but there was a certain authority behind those words that even a courthouse couldn't compare to. If she was a judge, she would have banged her gavel, signaling that the matter was settled. Mion pulled out a large bell from inside her clothes and rang it. Everybody present could only prostrate themselves for the harsh sound of the bell. なんともあんたみたいな若いもんにはちょっと信じられないだろうけどね。こういう古い土地にはこんなのが未だ根強く残ってるもんさ。It was exactly as Uishi had said. The old system of the three families had vanished and now the Sonozaki family was running things by themselves. On top of that, the rule was borderline a despotic. Okay, continue, continue. Eventually, after the ringing of the bell ceased, there was a deafening silence. Within all of that, a lone man shuffled closer to Mion and whispered something in his inner ear. Mion asked several questions quietly in response. When she was satisfied, she motioned for the man to leave. The man who talked to Mion was a member of a gang that her father was the leader of. That organization had the entire area of Shishibone City under its control, so it was quite well known even here. Of course, this was talking about the criminal underworld, so it's not like just anybody would know. But just showing a patch with the gang symbol on it was enough to resolve any disputes in the neighborhood. Mion's biological father, to Oreo, was her daughter's husband. Okay. The power of the Nmancy gang was a driving force that to control the dark underbelly of the Onogafuchi guardians. And so that man, from his position as the next in line to control over the three families, continued to coerce everybody around him with his unconventional presence. Mion exchanged a look with her father. Let's see his father though. Or her father. Was it okay for her to tell what she just heard directly to Oreo? It looked like she was asking him that question. Her father gently but firmly nodded in response. Mian also nodded then sided, uh, sidled up to Oreo and informed her of something. Eventually, Mian finished conveying her message, separated herself from Oreo and fixed her posture, waiting for Oreo to signal her response. It wasn't often that Oreo showed any emotion. 
That's why when she started to laugh quietly, a vague sense of uneasiness crept over everybody in the room. <laughs> Oryu was laughing so happy that Kimiyoshi had to hesitantly ask. Kimiyoshi, unable to, unable to comprehend the meaning of her words, looked confused. Oreo, with a wide grin on her face, turns towards everybody and addressed them in a clarion voice. <laughs> she really is terrifying. Bagana. Information on the kidnapping of Mr. Inukai's grandson shouldn't have leaked from anywhere. How did they know? Even we didn't know about uh, the kidnapping incident. Exactly how did an antiquated household so far away from Tokyo come to know of it? It was a tranquil place, but I couldn't help but have an uneasy feeling about Hinamizawa village. At some point, I had mentally filled this place away as unrelated to the incident at hand. That mental paperwork had just blown away in the wind. <laughs> Maybe because they are involved, sir. Sato-san, unable to come up with an answer, fell into silence. Sorry. <laughs> That major of an incident was nowhere to be seen in the newspapers or on TV. But in Hinamizawa, there was nothing strange about Oreo knowing something that the rest of the world didn't. The last question wasn't addressed to anybody in particular. It was as if she was looking for consensus. けがだけはさせたくないものよ。どうして。当主である Let's say there was a particular problem, one that wasn't exactly favorable for the Sonozaki family. If Oreo shows concern over that particular problem, hearing that somebody who attended the family council would be helpful. As a result, Oreo's wish would be granted. However, neither Oreo or anybody else would know who actually did it. With this kind of clever little ploy, the Sonozaki family was able to manipulate events even though they had their hands laid out on the table. 
親族会議に出席していた誰かが犯人ということですかあるいはそもそも犯人なんかいない可能性だってあるかな俺を自身その漫才の一同の中に誘拐犯がいるって確信を持ってるわけじゃないただ自分の意見を述べただけさ It was an odd and unpleasantly secretive way of doing things. Were they involved or weren't they? I couldn't see beyond the veil. This much, however, I could say with certainty. This kidnapping was an, an ironclad secret. No matter how high a position somebody was in, even they wouldn't know about it. If there was somebody who would know about it, they would be connected to public safety. In other words, one of us. The only other options were people connected to the case itself. Including the minister, there would be people affected by the incident. Or the people that committed it. In any case, there was no way an old household in a place removed from Tokyo by over six hours of a highway travel should know about it. Them knowing at all was already strange. My suspicions began to accumulate, like falling snow. 孫の誘拐についてお涼が述べたのはここまでだあんたの知りたかったことが含まれてりゃいいんだがな<笑>あとは兄ちゃんの仕事だな何のお仕事やってるか知らんけどその崎家を相手にするなら相当の覚悟でやっとけよ大石の旦那は怖いもの知らずだけどなあれでも23回は襲われてる最近は来てないけど一時はオフの時も防人ベストを着込んでたんだよなええ忠告ありがとうございます気をつけることにします標準語が流暢だよな兄さんは東京とかの人えそれが何か Investigators are we're always close to danger It was not best to divulge any information on myself. Okay, what are you gonna do, Akasaka? I couldn't remain silent here. It would be the same as admitting it. Okay.One more.Another topic that Oreo brought up.And right before he told me this, Sato san asked me if I was from the Metropolitan Public Safety Division.This may be a bit though.In other words, What those two things meant caused a chill to run up his spine. Sandy, no? Daisy no mago, Saratano, a shirabido, Tamini. Taka got a haluber, Kano Sasaka, Hawkins, Sarite, Kuruchu, Hanashida. Oh, hell no. They're on the lookout now. Kuano Sasaka. Daisy no mago, no you kaina. Rika, who had been drawing the entire time and was completely uninterested in the conversation up, up until now, looked at Oreo with an interested face as soon as the topic of the public safety come up or came up. Mion's father raised his hand slightly. 新米の若造が一人と聞き及んでおります新米
Damn, I'm immune to that. It looks like he's gonna be huge. <laughs> nice and slender or tender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hi. father smiled really as he answered Rika's question. Rika smiled with interest. Why did Rika suddenly act interested only when it came to this topic? That was quite a question that apparently nobody had the answer to. After her rather flat reply, Rika buried herself underneath Oreo's foot and futon again. But when she buried herself there, Rika no longer started drawing again, instead she was making an expression like she was deep in contemplation. Emiyan's father posed the question. He had a type of uncouth expression on his face, indicating that given the order, he could snuff the problem out any time. Mian's father asked in response. Oreo smiled thinly as she responded. <laughs> the sensation of cold, bristling fear began to crawl its way up my back. This family council took place last night. In other words, yesterday. Then today, I was dressed up as a tourist headed towards Inamizawa. Uh, my cover was already blown? When I remember the first person I met when I got to the bus stop, I couldn't breathe. That person at the family council expressed interest in the man being dispatched from the Metropolitan Police, Rika Furude. And then the person who was waiting for me the whole time in the bus shelter, Rika Furude. It was an unthinkable image. No, it was a delusion. When we met at the bus shelter, did Rika-chan already know my true identity? Did she know that I was Akasaka, dispatched from the Metropolitan Police Department, and come to meet me? Maybe, right? Because yeah, she was waiting there. She was, she was asleep there randomly, right? Then including Mayor Kimiyoshi, every villager that I met, everybody knew, but just pretended not to. Because Oryu had given instructions not to interfere? Thinking about it logically, it didn't seem possible. I met a quite number of people. If there's, if there's people that are good at acting, then there's people who are bad at hiding things. If there was that many people, then there should have been somebody among them who knew I was from public safety and couldn't hide their hostility. However, I didn't feel any presence like that. But even still, why did Oreo tell them to leave me alone? Was it because they were careless about it? Uh, would only raise only more suspicion? Or was it because they believed a rookie like me wouldn't be able to find anything? Look at that face. Agasaka is a coward. I recalled a strange voice which could only be make believe that Rikachan had been possessed. That unknown entity, no matter how you looked at it, knew my true identity from the get-go. And then how did it warn me again? That's right, it warned me to hurry up and go back to Tokyo. Instead of the realistic worry that the Onigafuchi Guardians had discovered my identity, the absurd worry brought on by the unknown girl stuck with me more. What exactly was that girl? What was the thing I would eventually regret? That mysterious girl. 
Rika Furude. Let's stop this. Everything I was thinking of right now was merely conjecture. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I'll report everything I heard right now to the HQ and wait for their orders. There was no mistaking, mistaking that the possibility the Onigafuchi Guardians related to this case was there. And the fact that my cover was blown meant I was in a precarious position. But as everybody at HQ was already extremely busy, they might not be able to spare the support. あ、A rural road, even a street light was rare. I couldn't see anything. I wasn't aware of anything but the asphalt was lit up by the headlights. Outside of that light, was it simply darkness? Or was there something lurking there, waiting to strike? I had to think I drew the short straw here. I wanted to go back to Tokyo. For some reason, the voice of the girl warning me to go back to Tokyo still lingered in my head. Finished this uh, sub chapter. Damn, though, it was very intense, right? That meeting there. Like, the other people couldn't really say anything when it comes to Oreo and Mion, but they would listen to Rika chan a little bit. Okay, let's check the tips. Investigation runs aground. Hmm. きのう銀座の料亭でお会いしてね。そういう話が出たんだよ。別室 月曜の町議で時間からその旨の話が出るんじゃないかと思う。あの人、たまにどっちの味方かわかんなくなりますね。うちらの… <笑> 期待してた濃厚なラインが時事ネタを話しただけかもしれないし。確か地元団体が過激に抵抗してるってやつだっけ鬼が淵死守同盟。確か赤坂君に調べてもらってたよね。僕は連中には今回の事件は起こせないと踏んでいます。ですが、疑
全然足りません赤坂君からさもうちょっと詳しく聞いてみてよ俺はちょっと要注意に感じるけどなその死守同盟彼村人とうまく接触できたって連絡してきました現地の警察とも連携できてるみたいですね赤坂君との連絡密にしてくださいそれで彼からの情報が引っかかるようであれば増援を送ることもありということでわかりましたあすいません片岡市長局長からお電話ですこっちに回しますかああいいそっち行きますもしもしオーケー What's in the box? There's blood though Do you believe that there are choices in life? Okay, here we go The deep deep tips <laughs> There are many people who lame at the following If there only existed points in life where there were clear choices to make We would be able to scrutinize those carefully and make decisions that would lead to us to a better future Every time I hear people lament as such, I cast it off as a rather trivial worry. Even if you were given a clear choice, it wouldn't be meaningful at all, and there wouldn't be any such path to a better future. Is this hard to understand? Then let's pretend that in front of you there are two strange boxes. In other words, you have two clear choices. Do you open the red box or the blue box? A lot of things would be uncertain even with that choice, wouldn't they? I mean, yeah, they're just colors. So you can't really uh, differentiate both of them. It's not small or big. If you don't have the option of opening neither, then your choice boils down to the natural impulse of opening the box that holds a better result for you. And then after examining the shape on the features of each and pondering a great many things, you have to pick either the red or the blue one. If this was you, which box would you open? Red or blue? If you were to go by the traditional meanings, then red would be a dangerous, threatening color. But yeah, I would choose red though. However, that doesn't automatically mean that it would be calm and relaxing inside the blue box either. In fact, it might have even be that the colors are a trap and makes you wary of the red box and have you open the blue. A trap? Could it be the contents of the box aren't a reward, but rather a penalty? See? Now you're at a loss. You're so conflicted over the choice between red and blue that you've stated wishing there was an option to open neither and just leave. But there isn't. You have to open either the red box or the blue box. Oh, I forgot to say this, but if you choose one box, the others will disappear. So you'll never know the contents of the box you don't open. I'll just put that rule at the end there for you. Now, why don't you choose the red box or the blue box? It's alright, you won't lose anything by picking either one. Come on, come on now. Oh, we can choose now. Open the red box. Have you thought about it? In the end, you chose this color, didn't you? As soon as you chose, the other box disappeared. So you can give up the contents of that one, okay? That's the rule. Now open the box you chose. Inside the box, there was a piece of caramel. I know you're a little disappointed. Well, that's only natural. I should have saved there though. No matter how you look at it, it looks like you drew the dud. The correct box might have had a bar of chocolate in it for you, all you know, for all you know. In fact, something incredible like a pair of tickets to Hawaii might have been in there. <laughs> Maybe. But even if you wanted to verify that, the other box has already dis disappeared. So there's no way you can check now. But if you think about it from an optimistic point of view, just maybe the other box was empty and this box was the winner. And being satisfied or perhaps not with such a cheap prize, you pop into your mouth and start chewing it happily. So what do you think in the end? If you were given a second chance, would you try to open the other box? I don't know. Maybe at this this one, we just got a caramel. So yeah, maybe. But unfortunately, the chance to choose between the red box or the blue box has come and gone and never to be seen again. The chance has changed or to change your selection will never come. 
Don't your parents often say, every choice you make in life only happens once, so choose carefully. See? Choices aren't that great after all. Aren't you a little delusional? Who the hell is this? Okay, sir. With very creepy music, but it was nice. Okay, the glint in the demon's eye. ええ、はい。それで、お通夜が明日の午後6時からになりまして、特別式が明後日のお昼12時から13時までになりまして、会場はお気の宮セレモニーホールになります。すっか。池沢女役の大孫さんの葬式じゃ。何に前札なしたわけにもいかんねみよ代わりに出てなうん了解もう服で行く香電はいくらくらい学校の服でんね前のボタンちゃんと止めてくんねよ香電はごま Mion quietly whistled in awe at the exorbitant amount of money her grandmother was offering. Ikezasana,沖の宮の事務所長だった頃からしっかりした人だったね。役人は挨拶って言っても。the two guests made a show of nodding, making it clear that they were paying attention as Oreo reminiscent. The sight of them trying not to get on Oreo's bad side was humorous enough to elicit laughter from Mion occasionally. Eleven. Oria closed her eyes and shook her head lightly, lamenting the loss of such a young life. Okay, I was gonna say how sad. Having got the reaction she expected, Mion cackled. The two guests unsure if they were supposed to laugh along and said forced awkward smiles. So after bowing their heads repeatedly, the guests left by the front door. Mian saw them off, waving her little hand goodbye. <laughs> well, it was true that Oreo Sonozaki was a central person for both her relatives and the residents of Hinamizawa village as a whole. As a voting block, they numbered into several thousands. It wasn't hard to imagine the mayor would try to pander for, to her. Unlike Mion, however, Oreo was looking up longingly at the sky from the veranda. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? 
Saying that, she left out a deep sigh. Mion was let down as normally. Her grandmother would have scolded her for her attitude. Mio. Arya let out another deep sigh. Really? Are you really saying that or you're just saying that? So. <laughs> the playful expression drained from Mion's face, leaving behind a stern one. And then, as to a certain Oreo's will, looked into her eyes. Oreo's expression or expressing her intention with only those eyes looked back into Mion's. Chocolate. Mion gave a small nod and then turned around. From far away, a voice responded in the affirmative. Mion, after confirming she'd, had, she'd been heard, picked up the phone and began dialing. Okay. So yeah, um, very... I guess very... We see, I mean, not very, but we saw the meeting, right, of... The families earlier, as Sato-san was yeah, pretty much telling it. Yeah, it was very intense, I mean. And yeah, we see how powerful Oreo is. Like the mayor couldn't <laughs> couldn't really say or disagree with her. Rika as well, right? What is up with Rika, by the way? Like all the old people are, yeah being what do you call her kind of like spoiling spoiling her calling her rika chama and all we're gonna learn i want to learn more about this like why right what like why and yeah i wish that in the future i guess we see more of how to put this other characters like um mion's dad mion's mom maybe we could see them right because we're already seeing oreo and kimiyoshi they have their own sprites now right so, in the future, show us. They kind of look like uh, very interesting characters, right? So, I'm looking forward to that. So, yes, we're going to continue this and do more of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 4, Himatsubushi, in the next one. So, I'll just see you then, guys. Bye-bye.